All right, we're back again. Got some new shoes here. All right. I'm going to wrap them paper. Must be some old stuff. Okay, so these are just like the other shoes. They're not ground on the ends here. And we're not sure how good they fit the brake drum. So let's see what happens here. Ah, here's the brake drum. So they're a little off. Just a little bit. Not real bad, but a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and grind these like we did the front ones. To fit. So let's go over there and do that right now. Go over to that disc sander right there. I'm going to make some fumes. Just like we did before. Freshen the air up in the building. Alright, so. Let's see how much of a mess we can make.
person don't want to grind in as much. shoe is not wobbling quite as much as it was there. Top to bottom. This one's a little better. This one's in there good. That's what the pattern looks like on here. <clears throat> so you can see right grind more right here than on the side, so it's in there. So that'll work. Okay. Work on the bike. One bike. It's gonna look like a bike. It's got a front fender on it. it. Looks like a bike. That's how that works. Okay. So I need to figure out this rear wheel situation. Look closer, you can see better. All right. Now. Get all these other parts on here. Big block they gotta put on. This goes on this side here. This goes on that side. There's a lock tab right here. And it all bolts together like this. Hands out of the way. So the shoes go in here, and this is the mounting part. Mounting stud that goes through the swing arm down here. So that's how that works. You got the bolts going here and then you have lock tab on it. So we gotta find some bolts to go all the way through this. That ought to be fun. And this is threaded from this side. Yep. So we're looking for a fine thread bolt. Probably something pretty rusty like this. It looks old. Yep, and it sticks through just about the right amount. I just happen to have two of them. So this one's longer. So we have two longer ones. Should have two of the same size. Two of the same size. Okay, put a little lock tight on these. So you don't have to have a book to tell you how to put stuff together, you just kind of kind of figure it out as you go. It's pretty obvious you gotta have a mounting stud and you gotta have a, an anchor of some type. So this is your anchor. It's on center, so it doesn't matter which way it goes on. So just kind of use your brain a little bit. In case you don't remember, because I don't remember all this shit. Most of the time you kind of figure it out as you go. I remember a lot of it, but not everything. You have to do one more often, once every you know, 10 years. I remember it really good. Most of this is pretty easy to figure out as you go. The block has wear parts in it, but you can see where the paint was on this. It wasn't painted on the other side, so it's kind of obvious. I feel like it stripped there for a second. It got tight. 
Okay, so now we got to torque these down with a little more torque when we use them. They're a little bit harder to do. Alright, so we're going to figure out how we're going to hold this thing so I can torque it. Yeah, let me see. Maybe I can use a tool. What do we got for tools? Oh, we got a motorcycle. So you got a sleeve. Goes in there. Oh, nice tight hole there. Huh? It's supposed to be a slip bit. Not slipping very well. So, it appears that the buildup in the vacuum plate is a little heavy there. There we go. Getting a little freer, but a little tight. Yeah, still, still like the goofy. There's a spacer goes on there. It goes between the swing arm. Now, when you put the backing plate in, you got to make sure it hits against the swing arm equal, flat against this and this. Both is done correctly. Appears to be pulling in equally like it's supposed to. It's a plus. Now I can torque it because it's being held. Okay, so now you get the lock tab, you can put them up. Which one you want to go where? There's one down right there. Spacer just fell on the floor. What a shocker. There you go. If you're good with the hammer, you don't have to use a punch. And if you need a punch, you use it. Okay, so this is put together now, so now this is all tight, and this is in there tight. This keeps falling off, so if we just put the nut on there, it wouldn't fall off anymore. There we go. Okay, now we get to figure out our shoes. Probably should make sure the eccentrics move, work. An eight point socket, so that works on squares. These are obviously squares here. So let's go on there like that. What size square is this thing? It is 716 square, it looks like it says. Now, these are supposed to go over the square here, the socket, and it's not wanting to go. tap on there to get it in there all the way. Still not all the way, but it's closer. Take that off. <clears throat> Definitely doesn't like going on there all the way. Before you form in a little bit. Okay, 
I gotta see if these even move. Oh, they barely move. Okay, this is an eccentric, so you watch right here. My thumb is down here. It moves outward and inward. Okay, put that all the way to the inside. Booty's falling off there. Get this one right here. Alright. Ah, these are tight. There, okay. So this one we pull outward to move it. How about this one? Yes. Okay, so you rotate this down to spread them. So you have to rotate the spread. So on this side you go this way, on this side you go the other way. So basically you tighten it to the outside and you go like this. That's how you adjust them. That will move the eccentrics out, going up higher toward the master cylinder. Because the master cylinder is where they're gonna, the shoes are going to move out. <clears throat> so it makes more sense to have the pin on high than the bottom because this is fixed on the bottom. This part here moves out. Both ways will work, but that one works better, I think. Okay, these are the clips here that hold them all together. This puts tension on the shoes. So there's a slot in the backing plate over here. The clip pops in there. Then it drops over this little pin right here to keep it from rotating. So it goes in like that. The shoe goes underneath this. It's got tension on it like that. It holds the shoes down. It's got two of those. Damn it. Something that keeps grabbing my sweater. Okay, those just pop in there like that. Okay. Now for the fun part. Put the shoes on there. Okay, we've got two brake springs here. Got the bottom one, the top one. I'm gonna have to figure out how we're gonna get those assembled on there too. It's going to be fun to do, I'm sure. Yeah, we'll figure it out, right? Now, a piece of wood right here will help me somewhat. I'm not sure how that's going to happen. Two pieces of wood to make that work, right? Two pieces of wood. And that keeps the backing plate from moving around too much when I'm pushing on it. Okay, what I do with the new shoes? Uh, they we're right in front of me. What do I do with them? Oh, they're with the drum. The drum's over here. The shoes are in the drum there. Okay, now these are equal lengths, so it doesn't matter, there's no front or back. If you have a, a little short one, then you got a leading shoe and a trailing shoe. So as the wheel rotates, the trailing shoe's on the back side, and the leading shoe's on the front side. So in this case here, the backing plate, we're looking from the right view. Wheel's turning this way. This would be the short shoe, and this would be the long shoe. I think that's how they do it. Could be wrong. I think that's how they do it. Okay, this goes in there like that. Move the shoe in a little bit. Right now, the slave piston, slave cylinder is popping everything out because there's a spring in there. Okay, so we got to figure out how we're going to make that work. Okay, so this goes in here, puts on the bottom and pulls together. 
I'm not sure how we can get enough tension on that to make it work. So I don't think there's enough tension right there. That is definitely nowhere near enough tension to do anything at all. here. So we can go ahead and put that side in first. Put the spring there like that. Rotate it around. Right now the spring is in here and it's got no tension on it. We need tension. <clears throat> I'm not sure how I'm going to pull that in there. I'm going to have to pull it all the way to that far end. That's going to be fun, 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 fun. Flip the spring upside down. I'm going to attempt to pull it all the way across and hook into there somehow. That's going to require a pair of vice grips and probably some kind of a clamp to collapse this to keep it together because I don't have enough hands here. So I'm going to give me some clamps and I'll be right back. Okay, I got me a big clamp here. I'm going to try to do it this way. Figure out what the hell I'm going to do here. somehow pull that all the way across to here so we got the clamp holding the shoes together we're against the pivot here these are pushed all the way in now because we're up against our pins right here our eccentric adjusters are fully collapsed so now I gotta try to get this stretched into that hole right there so I'm gonna use my pair of vice grips right here to squeeze it and pull it and there's probably some kind of an automotive plier that you can use that I don't have That'd make this a lot easier, but we're not into making stuff easy around here. We're into just getting a job done. Okay, so we're going to squeeze onto the spring really strong. So I can pull on it pretty good. There we go. Pretty easy. A little bit of leverage there doesn't hurt. Okay, so now that is in there like it's supposed to be in there. Yeah, there's a camera out. So, you can see how that's all in there like it's supposed to be now. So all the clips are in here where they belong. These haven't moved out of where they're supposed to be sitting. They're all over here on the spring on this side, so everything's good. So now I'm going to take it out, release the clamp, and everything should stay put and not change any. At least that's the game plan. Okay. Clamps out of the way. Now it's all in there like it belongs. Now I should be able to put it in the drum now. Without any problem. It's right in there. Yep. Got plenty of room. Worry about any binding. Okay, so now we know it works. So now you do is put this onto the, on the swing arm like you're supposed to. Okay. Make 
you put your spacer in there on the axle. Of course, you can't see a damn thing over there because I'm up here now. Close enough. Actually, I'm just going to put it in the middle of the slot right now. A little tension on that with a uh, crescent wrench. Big nut. Maybe it looks like maybe this one. That'll be the guy. Probably some kind of a big lock washer too, I bet. Which I don't see one sitting there. How's this thing? Hmm. Get this piece sitting here. I don't know what that's for. I'm guessing that's for a riser. Kind of looks like a riser for it. See, here's another nut and axle. That's an axle nut, probably. Looks like the same size as this one. Yep. Must be 5 8 fine. Okay, here we go. Here's some more parts. I think the lock washer for the axle. The axe is not supposed to have a lock on it. So I'll put that right there. Okay, put a little bit of torque on that. Loosen this up. The backing plate should still be sitting flat when you torque this, it shouldn't have moved. At least about right. So I continue where it belongs, so we're good. Now when you adjust your axle, you're supposed to loosen up this nut here and this nut both to adjust the chain. So I'm sure nobody ever does, but that's how you're supposed to do it. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and put the drum on there. Something like that. I'm sure it's keeping that from going all the way in. Something is keeping the back and the drum from going all the way over. I know what that is. I'm thinking it's the rubber boots on there, but I'm not sure. Let me show what I'm looking at here. Something isn't right. So see how the back and the drum is not going all the way. Everywhere else, it's inside the drum like it's supposed to be. Back a little bit. Here we go. So this is supposed to sit flush. So when we're sitting like this, there's something not right. The thing I see sticking up is this rubber boots here. Yeah, I'm not sure what's causing that. Nothing else there. You got a spring sitting in there. That's pretty far in now. It doesn't feel like I'm hitting on a spring. It feels like I'm hitting on a rubber. So I'm not sure what's causing that. Yeah, that doesn't look right. Let's look at the old parts and see if there's any damage. Looking like there's something rubbing. Hard to tell. This one here doesn't show any evidence of that. Hmm. So something is not right there, so. Try to get a rub, rub mark. Let's see if I can see anything over here. Looks like a rub mark on the can't see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Whatever it is, it's hitting pretty heavy, so. Feels like it's on rubber, though. Okay, so cut this 
stock booty back on here and take a look at it. And looking to see how far this sticks above the slave cylinder. These are definitely sticking up a lot more than the, this one is. I'm not sure if there's a diameter difference, but it sticks up more. Okay, I'm going to get my caliper and I'll be right back. All right, we're back. So I got my caliper here. I'm going to measure the stock one here. Zero that out. So we're basically zero now on that caliper. I'm going to come over here and measure the, these ones. So we're minus 10 thou, so that's not much difference. So it doesn't look like that's the problem. So. Same height as stock. I'm going to go ahead and take some tape here and put it over the boot. Yeah. Masking tape. Come on, tear equally. Alright, tear off the edge then, I don't care. So if this is the problem, it should tear the tape. So that one uh, boot was worn off, and the one boot is hitting. So, see what's hitting right there? Right there. Hitting pretty heavy. Now why is that hitting heavy on the one side? I have no idea. It looks like this is uh, sitting flat like it's supposed to be. The backing plate looks straight. Sure, what the uh, well, that's a problem. Uh, backing plate doesn't look bent or anything. So, for some reason, it's hitting, <laughs> it's hitting pretty heavy, too. I'm not sure what that's all about. It looks like it was hitting before because that other boot was all ground through. So, something is not correct. Don't know what it is. Now, I don't know if it's going to be a problem or not until I put it together. My guess is it's going to be a problem. That's hitting pretty heavy. So I'm going to throw the wheel up in here and see if we can see anything. I'm pretty sure that that thing is going to stick in a lot further than that. Pretty much tells me I don't think it's going to work. So if I don't think it's going to work. There's no reason to lock it up. Take it apart. See if I can figure out what the problem is. Oh, look. 
look at it, see if I can see anything wrong. And it appears the backing plate is bent slightly. Looks like it's bent in right here. It's kind of bent out a little bit like that. So I think that might be what our problem is. Yeah. Not 100% sure, but it kind of looks like there's something, something going on. All right, let's see if it, uh, what happens when you install it. sitting right here. Where's our lugs at? That's the lug right there. Quick mock up here. Let's see if it even hits at all. If it does hit, we're going to definitely have to do something. Either way, I got to take that vacuum plate apart and see if I think it's bent or not once I get it apart. Must be genuine lux, yeah. You see her? Genuine lug wrench. Ah, they fit. Genuine lugs. Genuine lugs mean you use genuine tool. Can't torque it as much. Okay, so we got that in there. Slide that over. Okay, now this here goes into the hub and centers the drum. Like that. Okay, now you can definitely see the backing plate is bent. See the lip right here. It goes up. So you can see it's definitely got a, a problem there. That is called not good. So now we can take that apart and try to figure out how we're going to straighten it and fix it. reverse everything we already did. So, there's my pliers up. <clears throat> okay, get that off. Relatively painless. That comes off next. 
cook them off. Okay. I probably have to pull this off too. It wasn't bent too bad on that side, so I might be able to leave that in there. Uh, it's going to be hard to work with without it though. Try to leave it in there so I have to deal with it. Because I don't want to deal with it. The less time you take those lock tabs on and off, the longer they're going to live. It's not like those things are growing on trees. I know I don't have one. So. Go figure out we're going to straighten that. Yeah, you can definitely see it being bent. I'm surprised I didn't see that earlier, but pre look another crap. Yeah, these adjusters don't look very straight either. It looks like they're bent up also. So, all right, you know, the room and play with the